Welcome to the Shreveport Connection. This is Tommy. Well, my name is Tommy. Uh, this week's uh, edition of SmackDown report and uh, spoilers for WWE main event. But first, as, uh, as always, uh, happy birthdays for this uh, week. Or to, uh, today being Tuesday. British Bulldog son Harry Smith turned 31 years old. While Jim Danville Nightheart turned 59. Takashi Izuka turned 50 years old. Advertised dark main event from SmackDown live event was uh, John Cena, Dean Ambrose, and Roman Reigns versus Seth Rollins, Bray Wyatt, and AJ Styles. No results to that was posted. It's been reported that Brock Lesnar and Paul Heyman are both scheduled for SmackDown in Nashville so as to continue Lesnar's program with Randy Orton. Kurt, uh, Brian Kurt, uh, Kurt Hawkins Myers is also backstage at the tapings uh, tonight and will also be making his return. Just wait for SmackDown, spa, uh, Smackdown results to see if he did make his return. Which I did not see him on there. Uh, it's reported that Brock Lesnar... Let me see. Where did that? Following last night's attack by the club on Raw from... Uh, like I said, Raw. WWE posted the following storyline injury update on Big E's condition. Tag Team Champion Big E suffered an injury at the hands of Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson following their match on Raw. WWE.com can confirm the injury, but nothing was uh, confirmed what it was. After Gallows and Anderson pulled Big E, going first into the turnbuckle at the end of post match, Raw. A brawl between Gallows, Anderson, and the entirety of the New Day on, on Raw. Tag Team Champions was taken to the trainer's room, underwent several tests and medical examinations, but WWE officials did not confirm the specifics of the injury or severity of Big E's injury at the time. According to Twitter exchange below, we could see something related to uh, former diva and TNA knockout Lisa Marie Verone, aka or also known as Victoria or Tara from TNA, at Stitched Up. It says Stitch Up Up a Damn on Twitter. SmackDown on Tuesday is going to be really cool if you're a fan of at Real Lisa uh, Real Lisa Marie. Just saying. Well. She tweeted back at Real Lisa Marie. I was told by at Stitched Up Damn that this week's WWE SmackDown is a must see. Not sure why. Hmm. Well, stay tuned for the results. WWE Cruiserweight Classic competitor Tony Nese has signed a deal with Evolve, apparently a parent company, WWN Live. According to WWE Insider, Nese advanced to the second round of the WWE. Of the CWC Cruiserweight Classic after defeating Anthony Bennett last week. The Rock mentioned that he has wrapped up work on Disney animated movie Mona and posted the following clip uh, featuring writer Jared Bush in honor of wrapping up hashtag Mona. Here's a little behind the scenes DJ Jared Bush inappropriateness. For hours of, and hours at a time, every session. When I'm bringing life to my character, Maui, I'm in honor of rap. I'm in, uh, I'm locked in a very small space with our writer, Jerry Bush, who acts out every scene with me. He's a brilliant writer who not only wrote hashtag Mona, but also a little one billion dollar movie that you may have heard of called hashtag Zootopia. He also had a locker room. Dirty sense of humor, which is why I love this dude and happy to put him on blast. But don't go to the bathroom uh, when he's around because he'll write inappropriate shit on, on your drinks. Hashtag IT bag this. Hashtag real nice Jared. Hashtag real nice. Hashtag we always make time to laugh. Dark match prior to the uh, Raw. 
that I did not get. Uh, featured Kane picking up a, a victory over independent wrestler John Scudder. Well, that's not, yeah, I did. I guess I posted on both uh, the SmackDown and uh, Raw video. Uh, as a sub subsequently squash match. And then they taped uh, the follow uh, matches before main event. Tyler Breeze vs. Jay Uso. Zack Ryder and Mojo Raleigh. The Hype Brothers vs. The Ascension. Well, Sheamus visited the dentist today. I posted a couple of videos of, uh, of this as he had a pair of injury from a stiff headbutt suffered at the hands of Cesaro last night on Raw. Show you a picture. Well, he tweeted on Twitter at WWE Sheamus. Note to self, headbutts from bald Swiss guy lead uh, loses teeth. Hashtag afraid of the dentist. Well, you can see why. Look at both pictures. And a second tweet. Uh, what's the best hashtag for this moment? Hashtag Bommy. Show a pic. Uh, my guess, uh, I tweeted back, uh, hashtag, uh, yeah. who's a, who, I was about to say, uh, who's afraid of white ghost? I forgot what I tweeted on there anyways, whatever, whatever. uh, is that? Who's afraid of? Not Ghostbusters? Okay. Uh, well, he uh, finished off with a hashtag, afraid of the dentist? Hashtag Swiss Screwjob. Thank you, Aaron, for, uh, Aaron Baldwin, for sending in the following main event spoilers from uh, Nashville, Tennessee. Main event spoiler. Tyler Breeze defeated Jey Uso. Zack Ryder and Mojo Raleigh defeated the Ascension. Second report, thank, uh, thanks to Tyler England, who attended SmackDown from Nashville, Tennessee, posted the following report on main event. Tyler Breeze with Fandango defeated Jey Uso. Breeze won after Fandango interfered and Breeze hit the super kick. Hype Brothers of Zack Ryder and Mojo Raleigh defeated the decision. Good match with the Hype Brothers winning with the tag team Rough Rider. SmackDown opened up with Randy Orton, Shane McMahon, and Daniel Bryan backstage. Shane had a TV screen and shows us the RKO out of nowhere to Brock Lesnar on Raw. Shane says it was awesome, but there will be repercussions later. Shane and Brian have a bunch of security, and Orton asks if, if it's necessary. Orton ends up leaving, and Shane sends half of the crew behind him and tells the other half of half not to not to let Lesnar in the building if he tries tonight. Shane and Brian bump into Maurice and Intercontinental Champion The Miz next. Brian makes Apollo Crews versus Kalisto versus Baron Corbin for tonight with a winner facing Miz at SummerSlam. Champion Dean Ambrose walks up next. Ambrose says he's headed to the ring to address the number one contender. We go to the SmackDown intro video and come back tomorrow. Ronaldo, David Otunga, and JBL on commentary. Greg Hamilton introduced WWE Champion and now he comes to a big pop. Ambrose talks about getting to where he's at now. And says he likes the view at the top. It's all about staying there. Ambrose likes leading the blue brand. And says he's here to stay. Which brings up Summer Sam and Dolph Ziggler. The show off. Mr. Booty Shaker. This brings Ziggler to the ring. Ziggler takes the mic and says he's a big fan of Ambrose. The two are actually similar. Ambrose says they're, they're not. They're nothing alike. Ambrose says Ziggler is all show. And he's all go. They trade promos. Ambrose says, yeah, Ziggler will steal the show at Silver Sam, and they will have a good match. But Ambrose will do what he does, and he's a winner. Ambrose says, Ziggler will steal the show, but he's going to lose. Ziggler fires back and cuts a pass in the promo. He says he's going to burn Brooklyn down and take the title from Ambrose at SummerSlam. Ambrose says, he's not. No, he's not. And it's not because of any conspiracy theory or anyone holding Ziggler down. Ambrose says, Dolph will found out his real problem. He's not as good as he thinks he is. Ambrose drops the mic and leaves as Ziggler looks down. Wyatt family grab it, flashes, and Bray Wyatt is in the ring. He lays Ziggler out with his sister Abigail. Wyatt says Ziggler doesn't deserve the power of calling himself a champion. Wyatt asks if the fans are really believe that Ziggler is your, ne uh, your next WWE champion. Some don't. Wyatt says Ziggler stole something from him 
and he wants it back. Wyatt makes a challenge. Face him tonight, and if he wins, he proves he's worthy of being the number one contender. If Ziggler loses, Wyatt will replace him at SummerSlam as the number one contender to Ambrose. Wyatt dares Ziggler to prove he's really is that damn good. Fan chat, yes. And Wyatt tells us to follow the buzzards. Still to come, AJ Styles has a message for John Cena. American Alpha de debuts. Up next, a triple threat to determine Miz's next challenge. Well, I think this is where I caught the uh, feed as uh, my mom got a, another computer well, from Walmart. $125. Well, it's a, it says a 10 in 1, 2 in 1. RCA. Detachable face. You could uh, make it in, in, uh, into a uh, kind of like your cell phone, iPad, whatever it is. Detachable wireless keyboard. Hmm. We tried it out. Uh, USA Goals has issues with Androids. So it didn't, it didn't play. Didn't realize that. So I ended up playing it on my uh, laptop. And then I uh, went to YouTube and caught the remaining of the show. From YouTube, from here on. Uh, okay. Follow the buzzer. Still to come. AJ had a message. I already did that. Okay. Back from the break. Uh, and the bosses are checking in with security for a lesser. Ziggler approaches and, and says he's fired up. Ziggler wants a match with White and Brian makes it for, for tonight. Number one contender. Triple threat match. Callista versus Baron Corbin versus Apollo Crews. We go to ring out first come Callista. We see Maurice, the Intercontinental Champion. Miz at ringside for current commentary. Winner of this match will face Miz at SummerSlam. So I'm expecting the interference from Miz as always. Baron Corbin was out next, followed by Apollo Crews. Corbin with a big shot to start on. Callista got a two count on Crews after Corbin was dumped to the floor. More action is Kazusa taking Corbin down on the floor. Going back to stand tall as we go to commercial. Back from the commercial, we get more back and forth action. Corbin points at Miz before stomping away on Kalisto. Borber was uh, nailing, nailing some shots to Cruz as well. Corbin catches Kalisto in midair, but Cruz drop kicks them. Both over the top. Cruz rolls Kalisto up for the whip. So, Apollo Crews is your new number one contender. After the match, Corbin attacked Callisto until Cruz came back here for the save. <clears throat> Miz runs in and runs the uh, and nails Cruz with a call, skull crossing finale. Well, there's her interference. Wasn't during the match, but Corbin took out Miz and stood tall to end that segment. Done the come segment. Eva Marie versus Becky Lynch. Match commercial. Well. I took me a break into the kitchen to fix me something to eat. Good. I, I, I still don't like Eva Marie. Nothing uh, more said than that. Because if you've seen her uh, first time in WWE, well, nothing more than that. Eva Marie versus Becky Lynch. Back for the break. Out comes Becky Lynch. Eva Marie was out next, and we heard a voiceover praising her. Bell rings and Eva immediately attacks. I mean, acts like she, she has a leg injury. Referee calls for a trainer to come out. Match is called off because Eva can't compete. Eva limps down the steps and is helped to the back by a trainer and referee. We go to Renee Young and Carmella is at the Smack Live table. Carmella doesn't trust Eva's injury and calls her a K Kardashian wannabe. Natalia appears. And isn't happy about Carmella being interviewed instead of her. Well, Carmella is doing some type of a promo for herself and headed to the ring and attacked from behind. Well, okay, that I'll uh, leave that for the actual match because they made it a match afterwards. Uh, still to come, Alpha uh, American Alpha debuting. Bob Villas versus American Alpha. Aiden English posing in the ring. With partner Simon Gotch, Chad Gable, and Jason Gordon out. Jordan 
uh, coming out to a big pop. Gable starts off with Gotch, and they trade holds. Gable sets up the upper hand, and in comes Jordan. Gotch nails a knee, tags in English. Jordan boxes a double team and tags in Gable. Gable comes off the top with a double clo clothesline. Alf American Alpha hits drop kicks and gets riled up for the, for the fans. Bob Villa turns around and works Gable over in their corner. Jordan finally gets a tag and unloads with two flexes on both opponents. American Alpha get, get to win after double team. Finisher. After the match, Gable and Jordan celebrate it was a go to commercial. Imagine this. Hmm. Shelton Benjamin's return. And my prediction, I'm hoping. Also, Charlie Haas comes back. You get American Alpha, world's greatest tag team, and they've got their own faction. And then later comes Kurt Angle. You've got your five man setting up Survivor Series possible match against whomever. Well, let's just see. Uh, let's, uh, say, book on Gabe! Uh, still to come segment, AJ has a message for Cena about the commercial. Back from the break, out comes AJ Styles. He's not in a good mood. Demands the music to be cut. Here's one for the reason. Here's one reason. John Cena. AJ is immediately interrupted by the music, and out he comes. Uh, to see, uh, to, out comes Cena to interrupt. As they even did some uh, photos and uh, from the award uh, thing that they did, AJ says uh, before he was rudely interrupted, he had a message for the C Nation. The soccer mom uh, chant start up. AJ says he doesn't want Cena here. After beating Cena up and be defeating him, he's still here. Styles says Cena doesn't belong in the same ring with him. Fans gave him the what treatment. AJ says Cena does his song and dance, and people think he's some noble hero, but they are weak-minded people. AJ says Nashville has the weakest of minds. Trust him. He knows. In a parent shot at TNA, AJ star starts ripping kids in the crowd, then their parents, then Cena. Cena eventually fires back and rips into AJ. Cena says he's in the WWE because of love. AJ is here be, to be just a really great wrestler, but there is no, no other place for Cena. Cena gets really fired up, and that's why the hell AJ is here. This leads to AJ challenging Cena to a match at SummerSlam. Of course, Cena accepts and says he needs to teach, a, teach AJ's ass a lesson. So, what he, what's he doing? Uh, turning gay? Well, he wants to teach the. Uh, Teach his ass a lesson? Okay, what's he going to do? Well, uh, there was some, uh, some, uh, video, photo, uh, video photos and pictures of, uh, seeing a dress as Hillary Clinton. I'll try and find the pictures and post them in a video. I'm going to take an extra day to find the photos to post it, uh, for you. And it's like, almost like, two o'clock in the morning on Tuesday night. So to come segment, Wyatt versus Ziggler, back to commercial. Randy Orton versus Fandango. Back for the break. Security is out to protect the ring from Brock Lesnar. Tyler Breeze and Fandango await as Randy Orton makes his way out to a pop. Orton takes control early on with a pin attempt. Fandango makes a comeback with a drop kick and a one count. Fandango mounted Orton with a right hand. Fandango shows off and fans boo as, as Breeze slap, uh, claps. Fandango keeps Orton grounded. Orton breaks out with a back suplex and makes a comeback. Orton with a big power slam. Breeze runs in and catches a power bomb. No, a power slam. Breeze retreats back to the floor. Orton with a second rope gravy DDT. Getting ready for the finish. Fans get wild as we see Brock Lesnar approaching the ring. He hops the rail in front of security. Orton sees it and turns around to nail Fandango with an RKO. Lesnar hits the ring and nails the RKO. Uh, nails Randy Orton with it. <coughs> with the F5. Orton disqualification finish. The referee calls for the belt. After the bell, Lesnar looks down at Orton. The Shane McMahon is down with Daniel Bryan and more security. Lesnar leaves the rings. Leaves the rings voluntarily. It's a fan champ for Suplex City. We've got a commercial. Back from the break, we'll see a video of Lesnar 
being let out of the arena, uh, he tells Shane he was just returning the favor. Paul Heyman appears and leaves with Lesnar in a black SUV. Daniel Bryan is backstage on the phone talking about Lesnar. He Slater appears out of nowhere, and Bryan asks how he got in. Slater says he would look great on the SummerSlam poster that was showing it backstage. Slater says he's the one hottest free agent, and nothing is bigger right now. Bryan announces that Slater will get a match next Tuesday, and if he wins, he will get a contract. His opponent will be, well, Slater gets taken out by none other than Rhino again. And uh, Brian calls for a medic because he's on the, he's on the phone. Uh, I might need a medic. Renee is uh, at the SmackDown Live panel table with Dean Ambrose. Ambrose feels weird about the whole thing and stands up. Ambrose rants on the SummerSlam opponent, possibly changing before we get, uh, go back to commercial. Back for the break, we get. Charlie Caruso tries to get the combat from Randy Orton, but he's in no mood to talk. Natalia versus Carmella. Well, here's where I, I support it for you already. We go to ring out comes Carmella with a microphone. She's doing her own in, uh, ring introductions, and she's attacked by Natalia from behind, making it to the ring. Natalia works her over and applies a sharp to her on the floor. She keeps it locked in as the referee tries to, to get a break. No match. Natalia walked off. Dol uh, Dolph Ziggler backstage warming up. When Shane and Brian walk in, they remind he's got he's potentially giving up a title a WWE title shot. Ziggler has a, has a screw a screw you for them before walking off. We go to commercial. Ziggler versus Bray Wyatt. Ziggler, Dolph Ziggler, Bray Wyatt are both out for the main event. Winner gets a WWE title shot at SummerSlam. Well, he actually did say that he's uh, got that. Uh, he, he wants to earn it himself, anyways. Uh, so Ziggler starts hard and attacks Bray Wyatt back and forth until we go to commercial with Wyatt dropping Ziggler on the floor. Back for the break. Wyatt nails the suplex. Wyatt keeps control and keeps Ziggler grounded. Ziggler finally makes a comeback and on those. Nails a big elbow for a two count or elbow drop. Uh, Wyatt catches a kick and drops Ziggler with a right hand. Wyatt launches Ziggler across the ring and hits the senton for a two count. Wyatt wastes some time and tries to expose the turnbuckle. Ziggler takes advantage and nails a zigzag for a close two count. Ziggler now tries to expose the turnbuckle and does. Wyatt goes for a sister Abigail but gets rolled up for a two count. Wyatt then plants Ziggler for another close two count. The trade shots and Wyatt gets the upper hand. Wyatt sends Ziggler into the ring post. Wyatt walks into an elbow. Ziggler sends Wyatt into the exposed steel and hits a super kick for the win. After the match, Ziggler gets to his feet as we go to replays. Ziggler hits a turnbuckle that stares Ambrose down. Ambrose stands on top of the announce table as Ziggler yells at him. Eric Rowan suddenly lays out Ziggler from behind. Ambrose hits the ring for the save. But here comes Wyatt. Ambrose fights Wyatt off. Rowan slams Ambrose and kicks out of the ring. Kicks him out of the ring. Wyatt uh, nails Sister Abigail on Ziggler. Ro uh, Smackdown goes off the air with Rowan and Wyatt posing over Ziggler as fans boo. And that concludes my Smackdown main event spoilers. And if I find uh, more any pictures of it, I'll be posting them through the, through the match and also pictures from Smackdown spoilers. As well, uh, uh, from, uh, main event spoilers. Thanks again. Peace out. See you in one video. If you don't know, just comment, brothers and sisters.